Find light to your inner soul Meditate to find peace I never neglected They say the grass green on the other side Take the dark energy Find a way to express it Then got banned a couple times For the weight of my message Word spills from the mind So the thought be a weapon The God To worry y'all Double R the God Tapping in with y'all So look I'm back. We about to do a movie breakdown on the clone Tyrone. Now that is a crazy ass movie. Uh, before I start though, I just want to say, y'all, listen. I've been locked in working on some shit, y'all. I had to uh, finish up my Rain God Two project. That took a lot out of me. Um, and I've been working on another project that I'm not gonna say until it is completely done. But just know that in this time that I haven't been here. I have been working my ass off more than I ever have to the point to where <clears throat> I literally had to remove myself from the internet just to take a break from my mind, just to prepare where I'm the, the level that I'm getting ready to enter into. So um, I watched They Clone Tyrone. It's actually my second time watching it. I took a lot of notes on the video. So in between the video, I'm going to be pausing the video. So it's going to be little cuts or whatever and uh, just referencing my notes so that I can give y'all the best breakdown possible. So first, we're going to start off with uh, with the title itself. They clone Tyrone. So what what do that mean outside of the fact that they actually clone the niggas? Okay, what, do, what does they clone Tyrone mean? First, Tyrone is the most common hood name that you can think of. That is the cl most cliche uh, hood name that you can come up with. So when they say they clone Tyrone, Outside of the fact that we know that they've been cloning niggas, uh, they've successfully been able to social engineer a Tyrone, which is a hood nigga who is out in the streets, maybe selling drugs, shooting guns, has this negative energy demeanor all the time. That is what they mean when they say they clone Tyrone. All right. OK, so at 545, five minutes and 45 seconds in the video um, in, in the movie. They show a commercial of them eating chicken and Popeyes. Now, we know in the movie, the chicken was being used as a way to make them feel better than what they normally feel on a day to day. They were manipulating the, Can I have of the, seven of the bing chicken bing burgers, to please. get people to act the way that they wanted them to act. Now, when I seen that, the first thing that it reminded me of was... One, the Boondocks episode this where everybody was sandwiches. wrapped around the line to get chicken. And everybody was freaking out about the chicken. The second thing that it reminded me of was uh, the new show, I'm a Virgo, where uh, they had the Big Bang Burgers. And everybody was eating that and his dad was telling them, yo, this shit is terrible. Um, but the third thing that it reminded me of was how recently, uh, I think I'll, maybe like a year and a half ago, everybody was wrapped up at Chick-fil-A for that new chicken sandwich. And they was running out of fucking chicken. <clears throat> and it just goes to show you, like, these are consistent themes that we've, we've been seeing for over the past 10 years, starting from the boondocks up to the Chick-fil-A incident that happened not too long ago. So when you see these consistent themes and these consistent patterns, they're trying to tell you something. Not only do we already know, but here's them putting it in your face, letting you know, hey, if you want to have the opportunity to do anything about it, here's your chance now. We're giving you... We're showing it to you in a movie. Okay, so at 655 in the movie, um, Tyrone talking to his mans at the house. He looking for Slick Charles, the pimp, Jamie Foxx, to get his money. And he asked him, yo, did you find him? He said, no. He said, where uh he said he wasn't at the hotel or the motel. He said, no. Nah. He said, Well, he said, Did you look anywhere else? And he was like, No. He said, I, I assumed he was there. And if he wasn't there, then I don't know where he is. That to me was a prime example of the nigga mentality. Like niggas do not have no initiative. You tell a nigga to go look for a person there and they stop right there. They have a one step mindset and and like it's it's just the it's just the whole initiative thing. Like you should be able to take the initiative that just because I said this and I told you to do this, you should take it upon yourself to go to the next level in certain situations like that one where hey we're looking for somebody, so if you didn't find him here, we, you know we still need to find him. Let's go try to find this nigga somewhere else. That didn't happen, and that's the issue with niggas when it comes to working together is that we don't have the initiative 
when it comes to love. We don't have the initiative when it comes to respect. We don't have the initiative when it when when we're trying to build uh build together or build each other. And I thought that was a very interesting point in in the movie. And I know that they always put certain things and themes in movies, but that one stood out to me. And so at sixteen fifteen, we got the scene where Tyrone is walking, uh, leaving the liquor store. He just scratched off the uh, he just uh has scratched off the uh lottery ticket right and he looking down the street and he see a nigga walking and he's bleeding and he's fucked up and a van comes around and scoops that nigga up and takes him off and he's just looking and he didn't say anything he didn't do anything but what's crazy is y'all might not notice but if you look closely that's the same that's tyrone that's tyrone from the night before after he had just got shot up in the car that was his clone or that was his previous clone. So he's looking at himself down the street. He sees a nigga bleeding and he just he sees him get abducted and he just just completely forgets about it. And this to me is a prime example of how niggas are so conditioned in the hood that you could see your own self walking down the street fucked up and get abducted. And you would just continue going on about your day and not give a fuck whole time that's you walking down the street right and that is symbolic to us black people looking at each other like we are each other we are all one we are all connected to the same divine source when you look at your brother you should see yourself you should treat your neighbor as you treat yourself so here you are looking at yourself dying that's the symbology you looking at yourself dying you looking at your people around you dying being abducted and you just stand there froze in condition because this is what you used to. At 1736, it was the uh, relaxer scene where they put the perm in the, re uh, they put the ingredients in the relaxer to make the black people more docile. Now, we know what relaxer do to your hair. That shit fucks up your head. It fucks up your scalp. Not only that, but your hair is, your hair communicates with your environment. Your hair picks up on the energy surrounding you. And not only that, your hair is an extension of your brain. So when you putting damaging chemicals in your hair, you damn near damaging your brain. You essentially damaging your brain. So uh, in my TikTok video, like I was saying, I'm going to show, you know, the side effects and stuff that go along with putting a relaxer and these certain things in your head. OK, this was what was crazy. At 24 minutes and 18 seconds, the trap house that they walked into had a break room. It had all type of shit. It was an abandoned trap house. But when you walked in there, it was fully loaded. Now, I don't know if y'all know, but that shit is real. That shit is real. Do not think that it's not people buying up properties that are abandoned and just leaving them abandoned to make you think that it's nothing going on in there. Ain't no telling what the fuck could be going on in these abandoned houses. And it's not just abandoned houses in the ghetto. It could be abandoned houses in your city, you know, major cities where it's just a big ass building and it looks like it's abandoned. But the whole time it's a whole operation going on under there. Not telling y'all to go look in those trap houses to see if it's an underground tunnel that leads to the to the fucking bridge to Terabithia or Narnia. But what I'm saying is that shit is real. Don't think that that's not going on. All right. Another interesting part was how everywhere that they went, there was a black or there was a white guy with the afro <clears throat> and this could be op uh, open for interpretation but to me it signified that there are agents that are white who are learning the culture of black people and are able to hide within our culture as a way to spy and, and to be honest it don't even got to just be white people it can be black people it could be anybody but it was the fact that systematically there were set in place people to observe what was going on in the most local and frequent places of your neighborhood your hood the local drugstore the strip club and the whole time they watching all of this shit another interesting part to me too was uh at 4646 when they asking the crackhead or the homeless man uh what did he see or what information can they give and i think that is crazy because it's always the homeless people that you look at as <clears throat> not knowing anything or not not being able to have any form of intelligence. But here this man was dropping game the whole time. Ain't no telling that they experimented on crackheads. Ain't no telling that they experimented on homeless people. 
ain't no telling if these homeless people have seen some shit that ain't nobody else seen, but they know that because he's homeless and he's considered a crackhead and how we deem him in society, that his opinion is irrelevant to the most people. But through all throughout the movie, the homeless man is saying stuff like, like uh, when Tyrone was looking at himself in the middle of the street, when Tyrone was looking at himself in the middle of the street, the man came and picked him up, uh, or excuse me, the car came and picked him up off the, uh, his clone off the street and took him back to the lab. And the homeless man said, uh, he going off to see the wizard again and he started laughing, but nobody was paying attention. Okay, so at what? 49.29, they, uh, they had the church scene where they had everybody drinking the grape juice. <clears throat> now, it's a couple things on that. <clears throat> One, uh, anybody who's been to church, y'all know they give out free grape juice. It's nothing about the grape juice and the church connection specifically, but it's the fact that, one, the grape juice that most niggas drink isn't even real grape juice. Barely any grapes in there, probably 10% of grapes, and the rest is all high fructose corn syrup, and everything is all destroyed in that. That's not real grape juice. So that's the number one. That's the number one that niggas don't drink real grape juice. And this is these fake juices is another way that we can attack the black human being. We can attack the melanated human being. Number two, the grape juice was making them feel more holy and more in tune with what was going on and why why was the why was the church such a big theme in this movie why was the church a place of target in this movie you would think that that would have been the place that they left out of the movie but the significance of that is the fact that church has been manipulating black people for years church has been giving black people this slavery mindset for years and not only that but outside of the grape juice there's other manipulative things that are going on inside the church that are making you feel a certain type of way. And you don't truly understand that this is coming from you. For example, when they play the music in church, the music in church is creating a feeling to make you feel a certain type of way. That's why church sounds all sound similar. That's why church sounds are played in similar keys because they're bringing a certain energy that resonating with certain parts of your body which is stimulating you and making you feel more holy or more in tune now is this a real thing that's happening yes but is this energy coming from uh jesus no this energy is coming from your divine being and this can happen at any point in time if you able to uh if you're able to command those things on your own spirit but the manip the manipulative tactics that the church uses is to get you into a not submissive but vulnerable state to the point to where you're you're feeling accepted by everyone around you, which is nothing wrong with that. But they're they're manipulating the energies of the people in the room to help to help create this feeling along with the music, along with the construction of the building. Now, not everybody's church is con is constructed in the same way that the ancient cathedrals were constructed in but in some of these ancient cathedrals they have designed the building to a way to where the shapes of the building help project and reflect the frequency and emphasize the frequency to give you a greater feeling they're placed on certain uh grids of the earth to draw in certain frequency and to give you that holy divine feeling that you're feeling this is a manipulation tactic because they're teaching you that it's coming from an external source and that the only place you can get it is here and you can't get this without anything else outside of yourself. That was the whole that that's what I got from that scene was just the manipulation tactics of church entirely. OK, this was probably the the most impactful um, thing of the movie entirely was was the fact that one. Uh, when they went down, when they finally went in, uh, in underground, used the elevator, and they started walking around, and they had the suits on, it was at 55 minutes around that time. And they were going in the research and development section, and they seen people, uh, they were shocking some people's brains, just torturing them. Um, some of them were being forced to watch certain types of TVs that had the screen over their face, and they were just flashing images in their face. Uh, there was another part where they were experimenting with the different types of music uh, and just showing how certain music affected the body of 
of black people and how it contributed to us acting the way that we do. And all throughout the movie, they had certain songs playing uh, like spin around, spin around. And it was hypnotizing. And even just listening to the music, it, it influenced you to want to do those things. So that's just another example of how the they're using music and they're using TV to manipulate the minds of black people. So the the one of the most interesting parts to me was like an hour into the movie. And this is where the pimp where Jamie Foxx is is going downstairs. And, you know, for the longest time, they thought that only Tyrone was the one being cloned. So when he goes downstairs and they start looking at all the clone machines and they see that all the people that they're cloning is people from the Glen. And he finally walks over to a clone and he sees himself. And then he realizes that, damn, I'm a part of this shit and I'm I'm benefiting the people above that are trying to use us to complete whatever goal that they're trying to. And that's when he realized, like, damn. But what's what's crazy is, is that um what's crazy is is that the hoe didn't have no clone. And the reason why that's so crazy is because there's so many hoes to go around, and there's so many hoes that create themselves on their own that it was no need to clone them. That was that that shit fucked my head up a little bit. Like, damn, there's so many females out here that just devalue themselves at such a level that there's no need, there's no reason to even clone them. We only need, we really only need the thugs, the niggas that are making the prostitutes. And uh, because those are the people that are benefiting us the best. And it just goes to show you that how powerful men are and how below we've been put down. And it just goes to show how much power we have as black men if we can take those uh, skills and use them in an effective way. Another drill, they, uh, another drill they dropped was when they got to talking about how America is an experiment. And America is an experiment. When you look at other countries... Other countries don't even allow half the shit that we put in our food and their food. For example, like Fruit Loops. They don't let certain colors go into the Fruit Loops because they know that they have carcinogenic effects. They don't allow certain uh, chemicals to be put in our water like how they do in America. America was really an experiment. And they were taking a lot of things. When it comes to movies, you got to be able to read between the lines. Because they'll put things in there that are for the cine uh, cinematic uh, for the cinematic expression and then you got things that are there for the underlying expression of you know the the hidden gems and whatnot but but when they said America was an experiment that shit was real okay so at 109 oh an hour and nine minutes in the movie the white dude who is the mall cop gets out and Tyrone is getting ready to shoot him in the head when, once he tells him that he's a clone and everything like that and he turns around and he says Olympia black and he goes under hypnosis. That is becoming a consistent theme in, in black movies. You know what I'm saying? Of the being hypnotized. We've seen it in Get Out. We've seen it now. And it could just be a play on... Uh, it could just be a play on the movies bringing about consistent themes. But I think that there's an underlying truth to that. Ain't no telling what's going on in Hollywood. They could be hypnotizing niggas in that certain way. You hip, Hypnotization is a real thing. But... What was even interesting was after that, I looked up that word. Uh, I looked up Olympia Black because I wanted to see why did they choose that word in particular. And when you look when you look up Olympia Black. um, It's an author of a, uh, a person. It's an author of a book. Excuse me. The author is named Olympia Black and they have a book called. Um. They have a book called, I can't remember the name of the book. I didn't write it down, but it's a book that's about aliens abducting humans and turning them into slit and, and turning them into slaves or pets. Now, I think that that's crazy, especially when we when we talk about how white people are using black people in this movie as a form of slavery and how that's happened in history, period. But the fact that the term was Olympia Black and Olympia Black is an author of a book called The Human Pet, basically, where they taking uh, humans and making them pets, extraterrestrials. And we know that extraterrestrials are manipulating people on this planet to control black people pretty much. 
So that was another little hidden theme that was in there that that was something in the movie that you would have had to look deeper into. They wasn't just going to spill it on you. So that Olympia Black shit was deep. So at an hour and 15 minutes in the movie, after Fontaine leaves the white dude and uh, realizes that he's a clone, and he says the Olympia Black, Tyrone just goes, or uh, yeah, Tyrone just goes back to living his, damn, this nigga name not even Tyrone. That's crazy. His name is Fontaine. So, uh, Fontaine, he go back to living his regular nigga life, smoking weed, drinking liquor, doing all the typical nigga shit that a nigga could do, even though he realized that I'm a part of this diabolical scheme to destroy black people. And this is what I was created for because he's so conditioned even after he has this awakening. And, and that just, that's a prime example of niggas not taking responsibility because a lot of people will watch this movie. And a lot of people will see the shit that, that goes on with the chicken. They'll see the shit that goes on with the perm and the hair relaxer. They'll see all the shit that goes on with the music. And they'll still continue to do the same nigga shit that they've been doing. They'll continue to still do the same nigga shit that, they'll, that they've been doing. Because niggas have been so conditioned to think in a certain type of way. And being in a certain type of lifestyle. But why is that important? The reason that's important is because... We need to realize and take advantage of the time that we in right now. We need to realize and take advantage of the fact that there will never be another time like this where black people are this free to do what, what we want to do and make a change and make a difference in the world. And a lot of people are just looking at it and, and turning their heads. So if you're watching this and you've been one of those people, now's the time to lock the fuck in. Now's the time to make a difference in your life and other people's lives and your, your lifestyle so that the generations before don't have to deal with this shit. So, and, uh, I can't remember what part of the movie this was, but I don't even think this, this was just throughout the whole movie. But uh, the girl, Yo-Yo, the prostitute, I think one of the, the most amazing parts of this movie and the most satisfying parts of this movie was that even though Yo-Yo was a prostitute, she was still a black woman that was sharp as fuck. And even though her environment had taken over her personality, it still didn't take away her intelligence. It still didn't take her ability to prop take away her ability to problem solve. It still didn't take away her ability to read books and to 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 be beside her black man. Because when they got ready to go down that elevator for the first time, when they got ready to go in that house for the first time, the pimp was not getting ready to go with him. Jamie Foxx was getting ready to sit in the car. When they got in the elevator, when Tyrone got in the elevator, they was both looking at him. And the black woman got in that elevator with him and she went down. She didn't care what the danger was. She was going to ride for that nigga regardless. She didn't even know that nigga like that. But she got in that elevator and she went down. And throughout the whole movie was the reason that they came to any conclusion at all. So that to me was the was one of the most impactful parts of the movie was the fact that the black woman, even in the midst of all of this chaos and even in this environment, she still has the capacity to be intelligent, the capacity to put shit together, the capacity to problem solve. And that even though we in these conditions and we living in the hood and you may have a certain job that may put you in a certain demographic, that don't change the fact that you motherfucking great. That don't change the fact that you still a divine being and that you still connected to the cosmos and that you resonate with everything. Even when they was at the bottom, even when they was at the bottom, this this was this the crazy part. When they was at the bottom and she was tied up and the white man was looking through her notes and he was like low side. He was like, way to use your Latin. That just go to show you how deep she was into the shit. She had looked up the Latin terms, had reference papers, full fucking PowerPoints, all type of shit. And. This is what's going to fuck y'all up. I think that when they first went downstairs and they had the 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 uh, screen on the girl eyes, there was a girl. There was a couple of people. There was the person that the two men that was in the room that was listening to the music that was fighting each other. And then they eventually gave each other a hug. Then it was the other scene where uh dude was getting electrocuted and then it was a scene where the girl had the screen over her eye she had some braids in her hair cornrows in her hair she looked exactly like yo-yo when yo-yo snatched off her weed or her wig and she had the cornrows in her hair and i think that 
they were getting ready to experiment and clone her because out of all the hoes in the street, she was the one hoe that was smart and that was that was intelligent enough to put shit together. So they was like, we actually need to clone another one like this. I'm not sure if that was actually her, but if y'all look, Yo-Yo in the movie was actually, uh, I believe that she was actually getting ready to be cloned. But that that is pretty much the end of, of my breakdown on this movie. That is probably one of the most enjoyable movies that I've had to watch, even though it, that it was so deep and it just really take you down a rabbit hole. I love when movies get like that. I love when movies start. I love the whole, the hood vibe to it. The whole nigga feeling aspect of our whole culture is in that movie for the good and for the bad. But I just love that it embodies us as who we truly are. And I want to see more movies like that, that really show, you know, you don't see a lot of movies where they say nigga, you know what I'm saying? And, and not that that's just the, uh, uh, something that we should be super happy of, but I love the word nigga. I don't care what nobody say because nigga mean king at the end of the day. Y'all not going to take the power of that word away from us because y'all perverted it and used it negatively at one point. So, but just the fact that it, it it's just, we're starting to become more, our, be more ourselves. And I, and I love it. It's the same with the I'm a Virgo. Like, let's really get deep into this shit. If we're going to make movies about black people, I don't want to see no more fucking Friday movies. I don't want to see no more fucking power movies. I, I'm I'm tired of it, y'all. I'm tired of seeing the typical nigga nigga shit. It can be some typical nigga shit in there, but let's make it more. You feel me? Let's Black Panther it out with all the without all the nigga nigga shit that they were or nigga on nigga crime that they was trying to do in the Black Panther movie. Fuck all of that. But as far as showing underlying messages and having a good ending at the end. I appreciate y'all directors. I appreciate the uh, actors and the actresses in that movie. Y'all did a great fucking job. Um, I love that movie. That's a movie that go in, in, in the books. Like, that's something that every black person need to see. I really respected that movie. Uh, I want to hear y'all comments on it, too. Uh, and we can just go We can just go deeper in on that. We just going to go deeper in on that. So, drop y'all comments, man. I'm going to post this video on my YouTube. This is going to be one of the uh, breakdowns that I just post on my page. It's also going to be on my website, too. I'm going to be making a TikTok video of just going over the major points of, uh, of the movie and just uh, talking about that. But I really enjoyed this movie. Uh, I hope you watched it already. But if you ain't watched it, definitely go watch it. If you didn't watch it, if you did watch it, go watch it again. But like I said, y'all, I got more stuff coming on the way for y'all. New song out, a uh, new single out right now, M.I.A. That's on all platforms. Rain got two out right now. Go tap in with LegacyTheWay.net. More coming to y'all soon. Peace. There was actually one more part in the movie that I forgot to go over, but it was the part at the end where uh, <clears throat> Tyrone is talking to his older clone, the, the original self, the original version of himself, right? And he's having this conversation and he's asking him, why did he do all of this? You know what I'm saying? And just, you know, trying to figure out the whole nine. And uh he's talking to him about how he's splicing the dna and finding all the gene sequences and the hardest one was the hair and whatnot and what what amazes me is that they still are using black people to understand themselves you know what i'm saying like they needed a black man to figure out everything about the black man because they couldn't do it themselves. And that is what they doing now in Hollywood and, 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 and in the industry by using black stars and black leaders as a way to promote their negative mentalities and to promote their agenda on us. <clears throat> and then the most crucial part of the movie, I don't know how I forgot this, but when they showed like, when they showed each one of the uh, people in those little, I can't even think of what they called, they filled with water, but they had a dark skin, uh, a, a brown skin, a lighter brown skin, a light skin, and then it was a white dude. And that was them converting the black man to the white man. And <clears throat> like, they could have just, they could have left the movie where they left it at without even having to show that. And it still would have been good. But the fact that they threw that in there at the end, like, yeah, this is what all of this is headed towards. Y'all, that is what has been going on in our society since uh, the inception of slavery. Since we have become or since we have became slaves and uh, have been uh, 
not conquered, but colonized, we have been imitating a white man. We ha They have been slowly trying to get us to be white uh, through weave, through removing our names, uh, from removing our culture, from removing our gods. We don't, our people don't even speak our language, our original languages. We speak the, the language of the European. We don't wear our original clothes. We wear the clothing of the European. We don't wear our natural hair. We wear the hair of the European to look and identify with, with all of that. So that, that in itself was just, that was just a game changer for sure. And even through the, if you look at a lot of these celebrities, they also are using skin lighteners, bleaching their skin. People are trying to go from black to white, remove all of their melanin. And it's really because of lack of, of knowing oneself. It's really because of lack of knowledge of self. So, but that, that I had to throw that in there. That was crazy. Like there really is a systematic agenda and converting black people into white people and eliminating black people. And if y'all don't see it, that movie was the was the uh was the icing on the cake. But I just wanted to throw that in there, y'all.